are listening to the Way of Truth broadcast coming from the radio studios of the Church of God in Hagerstown, Maryland, United States of America. We're truly thankful for the privilege of sharing another Way of Truth broadcast with you. Trust and pray that it will be a blessing. opening our broadcast service with the West Virginia Trio singing for us a song that expresses a need which every one of us have. I need Jesus. The Lord has told us in His Word, Without me, you 
can do nothing. So we do indeed need the Lord, not only in spiritual things, but in temporal things as well. For it is in Him that we live and move and have our being. Heavenly Father, we thank You today for the privilege we have of being a servant of God. And we do thank You for the gift of Your dear Son and the gift of salvation through Him. And we certainly acknowledge our need of You, and we're asking that You will bless us and help us even in this broadcast service. We also pray that You'll minister to our precious congregation. We know that You see each one of them. You know their needs, and we're asking Thy blessings upon each and every one. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next selection we will dedicate to all of our mothers in our audience today. The Way of Truth singers are going to sing for us Memories of Home. The subject for this Mother's Day broadcast, A Mother's Influence. We want to refer to a number of mothers we read of in the Word of God. And we're going to divide our subject into two parts, those that did evil and those that did good. It is sad that we cannot say that all mothers use our, their influence for what is good. So we're going to divide the subject into two parts. And first of all, the evil ones. And I suppose one of the most wicked mothers we read about in the Old Testament is a woman by the name of Jezebel. She was a Phoenician woman, and she married King Ahab and came into Israel and she brought hundreds of false prophets into Israel to teach the people to worship the idol god Baal. Another thing that she did, which was very wicked indeed, Ahab wanted to buy Naboth's vineyard, but Naboth said the vineyard had been in the family for many years, and he was not willing to sell it. And 
The king went back in his palace, pouting, and Jezebel said, Aren't you the king? Can't you do what you want to do? I'll get this man, I'll get this vineyard for you. And so she instructed certain men to plan a feast and bring false accusations against Naboth and have him put to death. And they did as she instructed them, and Naboth was put to death. Then she went in to the king, Ahab, and told him, Now you can have the vineyard of Naboth. The end of this woman, and it's not a very beautiful one at at, at all, uh, she was eaten by dogs. Yes, her body was eaten by dogs, just as the prophet had prophesied would come to pass. So she lived a wicked life, and she died a terrible death. In the twentieth year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, we read, Asa reigned over Judah, and Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. And one of the things that Asa did, he removed his mother from being queen, and the reason he moved, removed his mother from being queen was because she had made an idol in a grove, a pagan shrine, and Asa destroyed her idol. Now, we're talking about God's covenant people here when we talk about King Asa and Israel, and this mother had made this pagan shrine, and, of course, she and others were worshiping it. But when Asa came to the throne, he was determined to do what was right. He was determined to please God, even though it affected his own mother. So he removed his mother from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove or a pagan shrine, and Asa destroyed her idol. In Second Kings 11... And also in Second Chronicles chapter 22, we read about a woman by the name of Athaliah, and she was the mother of Ahaziah, who ruled Judah for a year. That is, when she saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. Now that would be her own grandchildren. When she saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal, and except one, because they took one small child and hid him, and she didn't know anything about that. Why did she have these people slain? She did this so that she could get full possession of the kingdom. Even during the year her son reigned, she was the real ruler. The book everyone in the Bible says of this woman, she was an evil woman who corrupted the nation. Now we're talking today about a mother's influence. And this book, everyone in the Bible, says of this woman, she corrupted the nation, not just a few people, but the entire nation. After ruling for six years, they planned to remove her and to install the small boy as king. And that plan was carried out. And this woman, who had usurped the throne for six years, was taken out and put to death even as she had had the seed of the king royal put to death. She suffered the same fate as they did. In Matthew chapter 14, we read of the deeds of a mother. And I'm going to take time to read several verses here in this chapter. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, 
and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. For Herod had laid hold on John, and bound him, and put him in prison, for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude, because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she, being beforehand instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John the Baptist's head in a charger. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it to be given her. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison, and his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. Can you imagine a mother being so hard-hearted and so wicked? There are others that we could refer to, but I'd like for us now to let, look at some good mothers. And the first one I want to call your attention to should doubtless be a very familiar one to many in our congregation, and that is Hannah. We read about her beginning in the very first chapter of the book of First Samuel. She was the wife of a man who had two wives. The other wife was able to have children, and Hannah was not. And the other wife taunted her and ridiculed her because she was unable to. And she was very sad, and she went up to where the, the chief priest Eli was, and there, at that place of worship, she sought the Lord most earnestly. And she prayed to the Lord and told the Lord, if the Lord would give her a son, she would give that son back to him as long as he lived. Now, the Lord heard that prayer and gave her a son. In fact, he gave her more than one child, but he gave her the son, and they called his name Samuel, one of the best known, one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament. And this man was born and became the prophet of God that he was because this woman, Hannah, desired to be a mother. And she was a mother, and she is an example even yet today to mothers. For all mothers, all parents, should dedicate their children to the Lord. And I'm not saying you've got to take him off to some secluded place or some monastery or somewhere like that, but you should dedicate your children to the Lord and do your utmost to bring them up in the fear and in the admonition of the Lord. So Hannah is certainly a good example and had a wonderful influence for that which is right. In Acts chapter 12, we read of Peter being put in jail with the intent of his being killed. They had already killed James the Just, and they found that it pleased the people, so they arrested Peter and put him in jail, and they intended to do the same for him. They were going to kill him. But the disciples gathered at John Mark's mother's home and began to pray. Now, John Mark was one of those that had started on the missionary journey with Paul and Barnabas. But I want to particularly call your attention to his mother, because his mother opened her home for the disciples to come and to have this prayer meeting. 
And, of course, she joined in with the rest of them, and God miraculously delivered Peter out of the prison. The details of this is given in Acts 12, how that God sent an angel and delivered him. Because the saints of God gathered in John Mark's mother's house and had a very earnest, sincere prayer meeting. Now the Apostle Paul speaks not only of Timothy and Timothy's mother, but his his grandmother as well. What a wonderful thing, a mother and grandmother. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. The Apostle Paul was saying here that he realized and knew that the young man Timothy had been greatly influenced by these two godly women, his mother and his grandmother. These were women who had a wonderful influence for God and for souls. I suppose we all have heard of the wisdom of Solomon in regard to the two women who came to him claiming the live baby was hers. There were two women who lived in the same house, and they had babies pretty close together, and both of them had their little baby sleeping in bed with them. One of the women, probably while she was asleep, turned and lay on her baby, and the baby died. And when she became aware of this, she took her dead baby and put it in the bed with the other woman and took the other woman's live baby and put it in her bed. But whenever the morning came, the woman whose baby had been taken over to the other bed realized that the baby in her bed was not hers, but the baby that belonged to the other women woman. But both of them claimed that the live baby was theirs. And so they took the babies, or took the baby, to Solomon. And Solomon heard what they said, both of them claiming that the live baby was theirs, and the dead baby belonged to the other woman. So Solomon asked for a sword. He said, bring me a sword. And he let these two women know what he was thinking. He was going to cut that baby in half. Yes, he was going to cut it in two. And he was going to give one mother half of it, the other mother half of it. And the one woman said, all right, you go ahead, do that. But the other woman said, no, 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 don't do that. Give the baby to her. And Solomon said, You give the baby to her. She's the mother. Yes, she was the mother. And she loved her child so much that she was willing to let the other woman have it rather than for it to be put to death. Now, I would like to call your attention to a mother-in-law. Yes, a mother-in-law. The story of Naomi and Ruth. Naomi was the wife of Imelech, And they had two sons, Malan and Chilion. And they lived in the little town of Bethlehem. But a famine came upon the land, and they left there and went over into the land of Moab. And after they were there in the land of Moab for a while, Malan and Chilion married two Moabite women. But in the due course of time, Imelech died. And Naomi was left a widow. And then, sometime after that, the two sons died. And therefore, there was three widow women there. Then Naomi heard about the famine or the drought had lifted in Bethlehem, and farmers were now able to plant and harvest crops. So she made the decision that she was going to return to Bethlehem, And the two daughters-in-law said, well, we'll go with you. And they started 
But they hadn't gone so very far until they stopped, and Naomi endeavored to persuade the two young women to go back. Possibly they would be able to get other husbands and live there among their people and have a family. And one of the women did go back, but Ruth refused to go back. She stood there with her mother-in-law, Naomi, and she would not go back. Naomi kept trying to persuade her, and finally Ruth said to Naomi, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. It is clear to see that Naomi had lived a righteous life before Ruth. Therefore, she was determined to go with her. I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. And you know, Ruth was the great-grandmother of David, and therefore she was in the line of the lineage of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And certainly Naomi was a godly mother and a godly mother-in-law. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the privilege of sharing these scriptures and thoughts with our precious congregation. We trust that the Holy Spirit will be able to take them and use them, and good shall be accomplished. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been a privilege to share this Another Way of Truth broadcast with you. We do trust that it has proven to be a blessing. If so, why not let us know? Our mailing address, The Way of Truth Broadcast, Post Office Box 88, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21741, USA. The Way of Truth Broadcast, Post Office Box 88, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21741, USA. Our email address, truth at fred.net, truth at fred.net. Our fax number is 301-739-7173, 301-739-7173. Our webpage address, www.wayoftruth.org, www.wayoftruth.org. Now, this is Alvin and Craig. We thank you for listening to our broadcast. We invite you to tune in next week for another Way of Truth broadcast. Ooh.